UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Bruin Talk along with Naomi Manea. This is John Ramey. We have a fantastic show today with some guests from men's soccer and women's basketball. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Our first guest today on Bruin Talk is Kevin Weiner of the UCLA men's soccer team. He's a fourth year senior, all four years spent with the Bruins. Prior to his time at UCLA, he was a stud at Miracosta High School where he had a .9 goals against average, and nine and a half shutouts. He was also the captain of the South Bay Soccer Club for seven years. Welcome to Bruin Talk, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So far this year, it has been very good for the Bruins and you just came off uh, two victories this past weekend over Pac-10 opponents. How do you feel at this point in the season? Yeah, we feel great. We, uh, we obviously had a good start to the season in our, in our preseason matches, and winning our first two games of the Pac-10 was big for us. It puts us in a really good position. Uh, you know, we're kind of in the driver's seat now and control our own destiny, which is important for us. Uh, the last two years that we've won the Pac-10, we've, we've uh, been on a similar road. And so winning those first two games was, was a big plus for us, and it puts us in a really good spot moving forward. Exactly. Going to the Pac-10 is a big deal. I actually spoke to your coach recently in one of the games, and he did mention how important it was to win the first two games. So congratulations on that. You. you guys are picked to win the Pac-10 this year, so a good start. Is it looking like it's going to happen? Yeah, you know, obviously we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, we have to focus on our next game and, and take it one game at a time. But, you know, like I said, winning those first two games really puts, our, puts ourselves in a, in a good position to kind of control our own fate. And, uh, you know, we don't have to chase some other teams and hope for some different results to come our way. We can kind of, you know, play our games with the mentality that if we have a good game and, and get the results, uh, things are probably going to go our way. You guys had a lot of turnover and you have a lot of first-year players in the lineup. Not a lot of experience returning, but you're one of the experienced players. How have you, as a senior, helped the new players get acclimated and become successful? Yeah, you're right. We lost a lot of guys. Five guys drafted to the MLS. Two other starters who were important for us uh, graduated. And so with 10 incoming freshmen, a transfer student, you know, and a lot of guys who have been here but not necessarily had the experience of playing, um, it's, been, it's been definitely a, a different situation for us. And so... You know, it, the nice thing is that a lot of the guys didn't need a lot of acclimation to, you know, the on-the-field stuff. We had a lot of talent coming in, and, and as, a, as a senior, one of the important things, I think, as a leader was kind of getting them acclimated off the field, how to handle yourself in the preseason when there isn't much to do except for play soccer. So it's hard as a freshman always, but you've got to give them credit. Your underclassmen have made almost every single one of the goals this season, I think with the exception of one of two one or two out of about 17 goals have been all underclassmen. Right. So tell us a little bit about the sac soccer talent that they bring. Yeah, I mean, 
there was a reason they were the number one recruiting class in the country, and uh, we got we got a lot of great players come in. Uh, like you said, every single one of our goals, except for one this year, have been scored from underclassmen, and it just shows uh, their maturity and how they're able to kind of acclimate to this level very quickly. Uh, and you know, our coach said something interesting the other day, and you know, they they may have been freshmen coming in, but we're we're ten games into the season now, and so they're not really freshmen anymore, and you, you can't really use that as an excuse anymore. We're you know, we're a team and the guys who play, it doesn't matter if they're freshmen or if they're fifth-year seniors, you know. Uh, and, and, but to get the production from the young guys uh, was something that we, we desperately needed coming into the season. And, and to have them step up like that has just been, has been great for us. Let's talk big picture about you. We were talking off-air about how you played a little bit of water polo at one point. <laughs> so you're an athlete. Why soccer? How did it arrive in your mind that you were going to be a soccer player? Yeah, that was a very brief water polo stint in high school, but uh, you know, just like most kids, uh, I, I grew up playing all the sports: baseball, soccer, basketball. Uh, played one year of football in high school as a freshman kicker. That was a less than memorable experience, <laughs> but uh, you know, soccer was was always the one that I enjoyed the most. I had the most fun playing. Uh, was probably more successful in that one than than the other ones. Uh, and when I was probably 12 years old, still playing uh, in AYSO. Uh, and my father was coaching, and it was one of the situations where they didn't have a goalkeeper on the team, and so, of course, the coach's son was going to be the one. He stuck back there, and, and fortunately, I was, I was okay at it and uh, moved on to the club level and started to develop from there, and, and you know, the love and the passion for the game really hasn't, hasn't died yet. So, Looking forward at the upcoming schedule, which games are you most excited about and why? I think coming into the season, the game we were most excited about was the one at UC Santa Barbara, uh, just because they've been, you know, a regional uh, kind of rival for us throughout the years. Uh, you know, but with that one in the past, I would say some of the ones we look forward to. We always enjoy playing Cal, uh, Cal Berkeley. Whenever they come down here, or we go up there. It's always a pretty tough match. They're probably one of uh, one of our biggest rivals as well, and, and you know they play some good soccer like like we do. And they're usually one of our, our biggest opponents in getting the Pac-10 Pac title. So playing Cal is, is, uh, is big for us. And if we can, we can get a win against them, it usually puts us in a good spot. So playing them is, is always big for us. Now, I don't want to bring up bad news, but you guys did lose at Santa Barbara. The crowd was enormous, nearly 16,000 people, something like the second largest regular season crowd in NC2A history. But you guys probably haven't your plans to get back to Santa Barbara because that's where the College Cup is this season. Right, yeah. Uh, I think going there, and, and even with you know, what, what some would see as a negative result, uh, we, we thought we played well. We thought we had uh, a good game. And really just getting that whole experience of that, uh, the stadium and the, and the intimate crowd and, and things like that kind of prepared us, I think, in the long run. And, and you know, being there, it only drives us more to get back to that spot. And every year we go in with the, with the goal of reaching the national championship, and, and it's no different this year. In the sport of soccer, being the goalkeeper is usually considered a high-stress position. <laughs> how do you deal with that, and how do you mentally prepare for that? Yeah, goalkeeper is it's definitely high-stress. Uh, you know, it's a little different. If you're a forward, you, you can mess up ten times and do one thing right, and you're the hero. If you're a goalkeeper, you can do ten things great and mess up once, and, and you're kind of the goat. So, uh, you know, there is the stress with that. I think a lot of it comes from confidence. Uh, having the confidence of your teammates, your coaches, confidence in yourself, knowing that you know you're you're a good enough player to get the job done. Uh, you know, as as a goalkeeper, you c a lot of people say you kind of have a different mentality from from all the other guys, and so you ha you kind of have to go into every game, like I said, with the confidence that uh, you know you can visualize yourself having a great game and then go out and execute it. What's the best advice you've received from a Bruin teammate or a Bruin coach? It'd probably go along with that whole confidence thing. You know, if if you go in uh, with some doubts in your mind and a little bit shaky on some things, then odds are it might it might show in your play. And so, uh, the goalkeeper coaches here, as well as the head coach Jorge Salcedo, have always tried to instill a lot of confidence in me, as well as my other fellow goalkeepers, and 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 that kind of pushes us to do a little bit better, I think. From the goalkeeper position, you can see the whole field. What does the saying "leader from the back" mean to you? Yeah, I think goalkeeper, you know, soccer is definitely, it's obviously a team sport. There's 11 guys working together. But I think goalkeeper is kind of an, an individual position within the team sport. 
and the fact that you're the last guy and you can see everything in front of you. It's kind of like a chess match in front of you and you have the opportunity to kind of organize things the way you want it, uh, being a vocal leader and, and kind of putting guys where you want them and setting up schemes so it can work out uh, better for your team. And, you know, obviously guys don't have eyes in the back of their head, so you have to be able to kind of vocally let guys know what you want them to do, you know, in order for your team to be successful. What's one thing that people who are maybe fans of soccer or follow soccer but don't actually play it at the level you play it, what's one thing that might be a surprise to them, uh, something that you can't know unless you play at your level? Uh, I'd say the speed of the game. It's, it's a drastic increase every level you move up, you know. You know, even as a younger kid from AYSO to club, things are going a little bit faster. And then when you move from high school to college, uh, I, you know, the speed is just incredible. Do you remember the first time you saw the I, speed? I sure do. Uh, my first practice here, you know, I, I, I came in and I was, I was fit and I, and I knew I was prepared. But, I mean, the ball, the guys are just so skilled. The ball is moving so fast. And... You know, especially with the new technology of these balls, and you know everybody complains about them, but they're moving around all over the place, and and so adjusting to that took a little bit of time. My first practice, uh, I got a little shelled, <laughs> let a few goals in, but uh, you know obviously it's got a little better since then. Looking back at your last three years plus the beginning of this year at UCLA, what are some of your fondest memories? I'd say the Pac-10 championships we won have obviously been have been great for us. The first year we won it was my sophomore year, uh, coming off what some would consider a disappointing freshman uh, season for our team uh, and coming back our sophomore year and really having a, you know, a good run and winning the Pac-10 on the last weekend and being able to celebrate with our teammates and our friends and families was, was a pretty cool experience for us. Looking back, maybe 15 years from now, what would you say is your, uh, the thing you'll remember most about your entire experience at UCLA? Yeah, UCLA has, has just afforded me a whole bunch of opportunities, and you know, it's definitely not limited athletically. Uh, academically, obviously, you're, you're challenged in a great way, and, and you learn so much here. Uh, athletically, obviously, you can't get better than UCLA, and, and there's so many other things. You know, I've been fortunate to be part of the Bruin Athletic Council here on campus and you know, other philanthropic activities here. And so really the whole package that it offers, and you're able to make such a really, a really good impact on, on other people, and you're put in a position where, you know, I remember when I was a young kid and I, I came to the games and I saw these, these great big UCLA soccer players and, you know, I was so enthralled with them. And, you know, now I look at myself and I don't necessarily see myself in that way, but I know I have, a, you know, a chance to make an impact and be a role model for young kids. So looking back, hopefully, you know, I, I think that I, hopefully I, I take all the chances I'm given here and use all the resources that, you know, UCLA provides because it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great place to be. It's one of a kind. Before we forget, I know that you and I were talking off air that you had a shout out that you wanted to take care of during the segment. So do, yeah. don't forget that. Yeah, every, Let's do it now. You know, my mom told me every time I got interviewed on camera, I'd, I'd have to give her a shout out. It's the, it's the great thing to do. So I'll say, I'll say hi, mom. I'll look in the camera. <laughs> Let's get back quickly to the action on the pitch. Uh, Sunday, you guys lit up Oregon State 4-1. to one, And uh, Victor Chavez had three goals all in the second half. A hat trick. It's an exciting thing. What were you guys doing on the sideline as that went down? Yeah, Victor Chavez scored something like a five-minute hat trick. You know, he scored three goals it happened in, a, quick. in a minute of, in a span of five minutes, and uh, each one in the same spot off the left post. And it was, I mean, it was obviously an unbelievable showing from him. And once again, showing the impact that our freshmen can have, and our and our underclassmen have on this team. And you know, we were obviously going nuts on the sideline, one after another. Was, they were important goals too. You know, we were up one zero at that point, and. We were really taking it to him in the first half, but didn't necessarily put him away like we thought we should have. And to be able to come out in the second half and for him to do that in the span of five minutes and really put us in a good spot, we were up 4-0 uh, by the end of his hat trick, was, was really important for us. Kevin Weiner is a fourth-year senior, all of them with the UCLA men's soccer team. Kevin, thanks for being with us here on Bruin Talk, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. All right, coming up next, we'll have guests from the women's basketball team. So stay with us right here on Bruin Talk. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions made here.
Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at the Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Jonathan Franklin of the Bruin football team as our Student Athlete of the Week. Jonathan was recently named the Muscle Milk Athlete of the Week for his 158 yards on 26 carries against Houston, the most rushing in a single game by a Bruin since Chris Markey. In this same game, he also scored three rushing touchdowns, and four of his runs scored at least 10 yards. In the next game, he scored a touchdown and rushed 118 yards to upset Texas 34-12. to His hot streak continued in the Bruins' most recent matchup against Washington, where he added 216 rushing yards and helped the team to score twice in the fourth quarter. Congratulations, Jonathan, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Tasha Butts and Markel Walker are with us now from the UCLA women's basketball team. Coach Butts was a standout player at Tennessee. She went to three Final Fours. She also played in the WNBA. She is in her third season as a coach with the Bruins. Markel Walker is in her second year as a player with the UCLA women's team. She helped the Bruins to the NCAA tournament a season ago. She was also invited to the trials for the under-19 World Championship USA team. Welcome to Bruin Talk. How are you guys? Thank you. Good. Good. So uh, it's almost basketball season. You guys are ramping up. Uh, are you getting excited about uh, the upcoming year? Yeah, we are. The girls have worked extremely hard all off season. They put in the time, the effort, and so now it's time to transfer it over. We've had two really good days of practices and we have another day today, so we'll see how they stand up to it, but they've done really well. Markel, you were only a freshman last year, but you already got experience in the NC2A tournament. Tell us how you feel going into this year, knowing you already have that experience behind you. Um, I'm real confident, because um, this year our team, majority of us coming back, and we have an addition, three freshmen, that's going to be good to a good product to our team, and people that was with, Injury reserve is now back too, so I'm looking forward to the season and getting started. Markel, you're six one, and it says here you can play any position on the floor. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. Which one do you like the best? Uh, I guess like a guard, cause I can have the ball most. Yeah. And you can take it in. Yeah, I like creating plays for others. So. And if you had to pick a, a player that plays professionally now, who would you say that you model your game after? Cause mm -hmm. you are pretty versatile, and I think of. One guy in particular is pretty versatile, pretty good. He plays now for Miami. Oh, yeah, LeBron. But, you know, I like to call it a little magic, you know, a little bit. So. Really? That's, that's old school. That's good knowledge. Yep. <laughs> We'd like to hear a little bit about your goals for the season. So if you could tell us from a coach's point of view and also from an, an athlete's point of view. Um, as far as a coach's point of view, um, obviously we were excited about making the NCAA tournament last year, but nowhere near satisfied. And, you know, we think we have the team that could definitely compete for a national championship and definitely win a Pac-10 championship. So our goal is obviously to be competing against the best with our non-conference schedule that we have scheduled this year, and then also making sure that we're competing when it comes to Pac-10 tournament. We want to make sure we're in that championship game playing against whomever, um, and we want to make sure that we're sitting at the top, hopefully number one. And when it comes to the NCAA tournament, we want to make sure that our seat, we're putting ourselves in the best situation to get a great seat. And, you know, we want to make sure that we go as far as we can and not being satisfied or not being happy to get to the tournament because at the end of the day, it's about, you know, how hard you compete, how hard you work, and, and getting to that next level. And we were nowhere near satisfied where we were last year. Um, players, uh, I can talk for most of my team. Uh, we're looking forward to winning the Pet 10 this year uh, if we put the work in the work in. So we're looking forward to that. And as far as the NCAA, um, we want to get as far as we can. Uh, last year, we, was, we wasn't satisfied. We knew we could do better. So we hopefully we learn from our mistakes and do better. Tasha, I want to talk to you about your Tennessee pedigree. You guys have a little bit of Tennessee West going on here in Westwood now. You played for coach Pat Summit, who is one of the absolute icons mm -hmm. in all of basketball. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked about her before and what that experience was like, but tell us a little bit about um, that, your relationship with such a, a special basketball person. I have a very good relationship with Coach Summit, um, and I have had for a long time, um, even as a player. Um, she was always that coach that always had a door open that you can go in and talk to. And the same way that I am now, I'm very talkative. I've always been talkative, so we will always carry conversations and talk basketball, life or anything. And I think the mistake that a lot of people make 
about Pat is that they think that she's just as tough as Nell's coach, but people forget that she's a mom. So even though she has a son, she also has, you know, 13 to 15 girls that she kind of promised her parents that she would be a motherly figure. So that's something that she definitely was for me. But at the same time, she kind of instilled a lot of values in me going through Tennessee with the hard work and um, making sure she told me, you know, it's two things that you can control every day and that's your attitude and that's your effort. And that's something that, you know, I carry with me no matter what I do. And, you know, she's just, she is, she's iconic. I mean, she's someone that has definitely paved the way for a lot of us and a lot of us hope to make sure that we reach those marks, if not more that she's reached. So I am blessed to be, be able to play under and then also have been mentored by her. Now, who's tougher on the players in practice, you guys or Coach Summit and her staff? <laughs> you know what? It is hard to compare because Don't as, call a, soft. as a player, as a player, <laughs> I would say because I played under Pat, but also Nikki was my assistant coach. So they both were tough. And I think, you know, with our staff, you know, we have a, a mixture of people who have played with Pat, people who have not. And, you know, Nikki, who has coached and played, and the same for me. So I think we have a mixture. You know, some days it, it depends on what our girls bring to practice. You know, they, we tell them every day it's about them and it's your practice. So if you come in, have doing things, then it's going to be extremely hard. But if you come in and give the effort, then practice can be as fun as you want. So I will not say who is tougher uh, because <laughs> I don't know. I've never played for myself. You know, so I really don't know, but I think Nikki is, you know, every spit of, of Pat, you know, if I use a, a Southern slang, but she is exactly like Pat in the sense of, you know, when she steps across that line, it's about business and getting better. It's been recently announced that some of your games will be nationally televised this year. How does that add to the excitement or maybe even some of the nerves for that, those games? <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I think we're very excited. Um, as the years go on, we want to get eventually get more games televised. But um, we're very excited. We're glad to to be able to show kind of like nationally what we can do. And some of the teams we picked up with Notre Dame, LSU, Temple, um, and going out and playing these teams, I think we want to make sure that the committee put puts their eyes on us early and not having to wait until the end of the season before they see us. And that's what we're trying to do, you know, toughen our schedule and get the RPI where when the NCAA looks at us, they know that, you know, UCLA is a team that could definitely be reckoned with. You guys have about the same amount of underclassmen and upperclassmen on the roster. Do you think it's an experienced team? Do you think it's a youthful team? And if either way, which, which way is the best for the Bruins? I think um, it's not all the way experience, but I think each person on the team gives something. So uh, that makes us better. Uh, I think it better us because we always got to learn from our mistakes no matter what. So just to have people different knowledge about the game, is, it helps, a lot, helps us out a lot. Tasha, what kind of off-season training do you like your girls to do? Um, well, a lot of things that they do, um, like this year, they kind of made a pact to themselves that they all wanted to kind of stay around in summer school. And we had Markel, who is from Philly, that, you know, she went home to visit her family, so she wasn't here the entire off season. But a lot of them were, and they put themselves through where they were with our strength and conditioning coach, and they got on a regular lifting schedule. They would play what we call pickup, so they're trying to make sure they maintain game shape. And it's a lot of things that we did with them after the season that we wanted them to carry over individually and that was putting them through different skill work. So a lot of things that we thought they needed to work on, we showed them, you know, right after the season and a lot of them got in the gym and did exactly what we asked. And it is, is evident now that we've gotten back in the gym and we're not having to spend a lot of time on conditioning. We're not having to spend a lot of time on the little things that we did and because you can tell that they've been in the gym. Markel, you're from Philly. Yeah. But you're, but you're balling in LA now. What's the difference? A lot. Uh, LA is like a laid back. Well, West Coast is laid back. You know, East Coast is more like aggressive. I should say. Like, um, it's it's crazy different. Like, <laughs> uh, the food is different. Like, more healthy. You know. So it's 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 something that you got to get used to. Something that grows on you. It's something that you. Because I know coming here um, as a freshman, I was ready to go back. I, I was, it didn't feel right. But uh, it's something that definitely grows on you. You know Kobe's from Philly, right? Yeah. And he's doing okay here in L.A., mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You guys like Kobe? You pay attention mm -hmm. to the Lakers and the team? You know, I don't like Kobe. No? <laughs> I mean, no, I don't. Well, there's got to be some Laker fan on the team. I respect his game, yeah? but I don't like him. Wow. Yeah. 
All right. She heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> I guess she's not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Markel, basketball is usually considered a game of uh, speed and agility, but most people don't realize how much strength it takes. So tell us a little bit from the athlete's perspective about the strength training you do. Uh, well, I have strength and conditioning coach, you know, Wes Long. He's very, uh, I say, what's the word to describe him? I don't even know, but he, 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 he works hard. Like he's, uh, He's very demanding, like if we in the weight room playing around, like he'll tell us about it, we gotta stop right then and there. Uh, he does everything to make us better. Uh, we lift weights, just like the men's basketball team, and um, we run, we, we do uh, bike workouts. Uh, sometimes, like we had, during the summer, we had 7 a.m. workouts, and like uh, we late, he penalized us. So it's very like, um, yeah, we don't get no day offs. The uh, who's the biggest trash talker on the team? Trash talker, as in I don't know. Trash. I think all of us get a little trash talk depending on the competitiveness. Like all of us can talk a little trash, especially if it's if we're in it. Like all of us can, yeah, hit that note. <laughs> who's the best trash talker on the staff? Tony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony Perotti. And, and that's because I think that he is surrounded by women uh, every day, all day. So he has to hold his own. And But I will say that Tony does a great job of being surrounded by nothing but women and still keeping his sanity. But he is by far the biggest trash talker oh on our God. team. Yeah. I believe and it. to our team. <laughs> uh, he plays with us, like games, and he'll follow us, he'll pull us, like <laughs> scratch us, like talk trash, like call fouls on us when he following us. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Good Mark Pell, you're a sophomore now. Tell us a little bit how you're going to be an example and how you're planning on leading the freshmen. This summer I worked on what I was supposed to be working on, like uh, improving my jump shot. So uh, now I can play various positions on the floor, more, outs more inside, outside, or outside, inside. So uh, majority of our, I'm very outspoken. Like I'm very outspoken. I don't bite my tongue. I'm going to tell you how it is. So. Uh, I think that just having that voice on my team and like uh, doing what I'm supposed to do, not just on the basketball court, but in the classrooms, uh, just following by example. Like, so just let, making them, let them know what it is and just hoping they lead. I'm at follow me. <laughs> Markel Walker, Tasha Butts from the UCLA Thank women's God. basketball team. Thanks for being on Bruin Talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Good Thank job. You. Thank Thanks. you. For Naomi Manea, this is John Ramey. Thanks for being with us here on Bruin Talk.